If you do not understand the mystery behind principalities and powers, you will never know what Jesus came to do for you. Because most times I begin to wonder, why did Jesus come? Why did he come and die? For who? Who received his propitiation? Who was the guy? He says, he came to die for me. How? Who received the blood of Jesus on my behalf? If Jesus came to die for me, who then received the blood of Jesus on my behalf? Who? Is it God? Of course. God sent Jesus. Say, please go and die for them. Is it that God was happy that Jesus should die? You know, you need to start asking questions. Because until you start asking questions, you will never encounter revelations. You need to start asking questions. Why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus need to die? Because of man's sin. Is God not God that can stay in heaven and say, man, your sins are forgiven? I thought to say, who can challenge him? No one can challenge him. But you see, God is a God of justice. He doesn't play with his rules. And those of you that keep saying that, um, thank God for the dispensation of grace, that the laws has been abolished. God has abolished the law. So that the sinful man who had accepted Jesus Christ will enjoy eternal glory. But the, the law is never abolished in the flesh. And that is why whenever you have violated a section of the law, you are dealt with. And those who bring the punishment on you are the principalities and powers. They are the ones that bring punishment. And the punishment they give to you does not transcend into the spirit realm. The punishment they give to you is only in the physical realm because the reason why Jesus came is so that principalities and powers will not have access to your soul. If you watch critically, immediately Jesus died. He released those who principality were holding their souls. So the graves of those people were open and they began to parade everywhere. They started moving everywhere in the city. Jesus, as soon as he came back to life, straight, he went straight to go and open that gate before even coming back to visit Thomas and other disciples. That was why when the woman wanted to touch him, he said, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended unto my father. So he went straight, because if he didn't go straight, those people, principality, were holding their soul prior before the death of Christ. They, was, they started moving around the holy cities, and people saw them. We are in a glorified body. People saw them physically. So Jesus quickly went back to that gate that they chased Adam and Eve from, and then he brought this man in. When he discovered that those cloud of witnesses, those men, have got into the heavenly realm, that was when he returned and told Peter, Thomas, uh, Thomas, you can touch me. Now he has finished presenting the blood. And then he came back and said, you can touch me. So, did God receive the blood of Jesus? No. God, the blood of Jesus was not meant for God to receive. The blood of Jesus was meant to empower the heavenlies. So that they can pull out that old serpent that have taken away the Adamic authority. And that was why the Bible says in that Revelation 12, it said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Oh, the Bible talked about a man in a host and his vesture was dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. They were trying to describe how Jesus looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, until you know what until you know about principality, you can never know what Jesus came to do for you. This is a serious issue. A lot of people have received prophecies. Oh, if I be a man of God, you are going to take him. If I be a man of God, you are going to have breakthrough. If I be a man of God, you are going to have this. You can imagine how many years you have wasted believing that such declaration would come to pass in your life. Now, I'm not in any way saying those who said that are not men of God. I didn't say that. Those who say, if I be a man of God, this will happen. They are men of God. N majority of them are men of God. That's why they could tell you, if I be a man of God, this will happen. But where the problem is, is you cannot stand and declare such words without the presence of your witnesses. That's why principality will not respect you. Now you begin to wonder, why do we make declaration and something happens instantly? Does it mean those who are saying that I'm or does it mean I'm powerful than them? No, I'm not powerful than them. What happens is I know how to do the right thing. Do you want to really understand why you are suffering? Do you want to really understand why you are praying? No answer. 
you are fasting, no answer. Do you really want to understand or you want to argue? Listen to me. Why you are going through what you're going through, it's what we call principalities and powers. That is why you are going through what you are going through now. You must understand their rank structures. You must also understand why was NJ Gabriel not able to defeat the principality in charge of Pesha until a higher ranking NJ came, which was NJ Michael. You know, the Bible says in Joel 2 7, they shall run like mighty men, climb the wall like men of war. Every man must march on his way, but they shall not break their ranks. In the committee of spirits, people don't joke with rank structure. That's why I love the wise man that said, in the university of God, however clever you may be, you will not be given double promotion. You will take every cause because each cause serves a purpose. Dealing with principalities is one serious issue you need to tackle. Don't listen to anybody telling you that principalities has been defeated, that you defeated principality in Jesus. I agree with them that you defeated principality in Jesus, but who is the you? Is it your flesh or your soul? You see it now? Is it your flesh that defeated principality in Jesus or your soul that defeated principality in Jesus? Until you get that picture very clear, you will still be in bondage. Many people are getting discouraged in churches. Many people are tired. They are no longer going to churches anymore. They say, we have left church. Yes, why wouldn't they leave church? I don't blame them for leaving church. I, because the reason they left church is because they came to see power. But now power has disappeared from the church. What you have is those who claim they know. And they know nothing. The Bible says, he that thinketh, he knoweth anything. He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. He said, let he that stand there take heed lest he fall. That somebody will come and make a declaration. He said, ah, by this time next year, if I be a man of God, let my situation change. Let this happen. Or let the, your situation will change. Next year will pass. Nothing will happen. And then you begin to wonder, why won't they leave the church? Church now has now become a place where people just come and feel happy. They hype them. Tell them what they want to hear. It doesn't matter. Go and commit as many sins you feel like committing because Jesus has paid it full penalty for every sin and every wrong. Grace is speaking for you. Oh, you see me. The reason why I can never commit fornication is because I had come to discover the mystery behind the punishment of the bodies when you commit fornication. This is what the Bible saw, and it said, Flee from fornication. Many have refused to flee, and they are expecting that power will flow. In the body of fornication. Ah. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on yourself. Name remains God's will, Abbey. And I am the principality specialist. God bless you.